G'day folks. I just thought I'd give you a little sub-autopsy. Uh, I finally got the chuck off this uh, cordless drill uh, body gearbox. This is out of an 18 volt Milwaukee lithium. Uh, very good chuck. Uh, I did get the screw out but getting the chuck off again as someone suggested put a very big allen key in it and twist really hard and I did manage to get it. The other hard part was locking the gearbox up enough to actually do it because since I pulled the guts out of it, it didn't like uh, locking in the uh, correct direction. Now I've changed it, it does lock in the right direction. Uh, this one made by Yukiwa Seiko Incorporated, Japan. These are an exceptionally good chuck. Uh, it's very similar to, or similar in performance to a Rome chuck, a German one. Uh, the ones they put in, put on Milwaukee's today, the metal bodied ones, aluminum bodied ones, they just do not compare to these at all. These are a much better chuck, so that's why I'm keeping it. Uh, but we're going to have a closer look at a pressure plate, or yeah, I suppose a spring clutch or pressure plate type drill clutch. Uh, this works on the principle as you wind the collar up, that's in drill mode, so the clutch isn't doing anything. It gets tighter, compressing the plates. As you wind it down, it gets a lot easier to turn. And on one and two, it's virtually free. So I'm going to take this circlip off and we'll have a closer look at how it works and how the pressure plates or fingers work on it. I'm pretty sure these either have multiple fingers or one big pressure plate. Okay, so the clip's off. Oops, there's a few ball bearings in there. Uh, they just look like thrust bearings on the front collar. Yep. Oh, yeah, there we go. That's where the bearings were. Oh, they're little detent, ball detents. They go into here. The, it clicks. Snap, snap, snap as they go around. They roll on these little splines here. There's a spring. Where is the actual tension... Uh, or is it in there? I think it's in there. Ah, there we go. Lose those. Yeah, the more you rotate that, the further back it goes. So that is actually the clutch. Is that the friction surface there? No, there's a spring there. That's a thrust bearing. Ah, I see. Those balls are lifting up as I turn the main spindle, the output shaft. So, as you wind it down, this applies more pressure to that plate there and keeps those bowls locked into the into the main drive. That's cool. Yeah, as you can see as I turn it, it slips. So this is, as you wind the collar back, this winds down or screws down and applies more pressure to that collar. So I'm going to take these other screws out and hopefully that whole lot will lift out. That should show the actual clutch fingers and assembly. I don't think it's just those balls, I think there's more to it. Because ball bearings in detents will still slip even when it's locked all the way up. I think there's something else. Okay, so it all kind of came apart rather dramatically when I removed the clip and I think I've worked it out. We have the main shaft input from the first and second stage gearbox reduction coming into here is where these other planetary gears go, that all got drops in there and it's got these little drive dogs on it, little poles they're all serrated um, I'm guessing pressure on this collar pushes the ball bearings down in here and makes this little drive dog less reluctant to slip because he fits in there you fit in there, and these little poles fit around him. So, 
the more pressure you put on that, or the more pressure you put on these ball bearings, uh, the more reluctant they are to slip out of the way. Or, sorry, slip over these little humps here. When they slip over, this is all going to pop out and just slip. So if the whole lot's fully aligned, oops, that one's gone, but yeah, they're all pushed against their little lands either direction. When it slips, they all hop over to the next one. All of these expand, release that drive dog, which is connected directly to the main shaft with the chuck attached to it, and it slips. That's all I can figure. So it's not like an old one. I pulled one apart years ago and it had these little pressure plates or fingers in it. This is completely different. Not what I was expecting. And there are a lot of little metal bits in here. They're not hand machined or anything. They look like they're um, forged out of sintered steel or something. Or pressed, just punched out. They're not um, properly machined. But they do their job. And there should be five, four or five gears in here. Yeah, there we go. One's missing. It disappeared on the floor as well. But yeah, these little guys here, they would... Where do you go? Yeah, you fit up inside there. Basically, they just sit on top. Yeah, and once these little ball bearings hop over, this little guy here is allowed to slip. All of it's allowed to slip essentially. So they just go pop, pop, pop and hop off the uh, thing. This one here doesn't actually look like it wears. So he probably he probably doesn't spin independently. It's got the shaft going through it. But the rest of it does. So yeah, you can see there's a little thrust, thrust washer. There isn't even a bearing. That's just a, uh, a wear plate or something. the third stage or fourth stage reduction. There's your high-low selector collar again that I showed in the previous video. And that's the main drive. That sits in there. It's part of the final final reduction drive. That's neat. Definitely not what I was expecting. I have pulled these apart before and years and years ago. It was just a dirt cheap one and it had some weird pressure plate clutch in it. This is way more sophisticated. And given the abuse that it's been through in a fabrication shop slash machine shop, production shop, it's done all right. Anyway, that's about all for that one. Thanks for watching. Not much else to really tear down. You know, you can see little friction surfaces inside there. I wonder if that's actually lock up. Ah, oh, I know what that is. That'll be lock up for when you do the chuck up. You try and turn it externally, the whole lot bites into the walls of the. Uh, these all bite into, uh, get driven out and bite into the uh, walls of this sleeve here. This this co this uh, bearing housing. That's what you are. Uh, yep. That's how you can do the chuck up one hand. You don't have a separate collar to hold onto and tighten it. Yep. So that's not part of the clutch. That those serrations. I what lock it up when you grab the clutch and grab grab the chuck and twist it to to tighten on the drill bit or the driver bit. Cool. I think I worked it all out. <laughs> Thanks for watching. And uh, if you've got any uh, pointers or information that I bits that I might have missed, let me know. But I think I worked it all out. Again, I'm not a drill expert. I just make things and take things apart. But knowing how things work helps you make things so don't be afraid to take something apart and possibly put it back together again especially if you still need it <laughs> thanks for watching